This is Columbia Morning with David Lyle, FRU. Brent Gann is in the studio with me. We're going to talk about some of uh, the uh, issues that come from the last legislative session in Jefferson City. He represents Coalition for Missouri's Future. He's also the Chief Communication Officer for Missouri School Boards Association. Good to see you. How are you? Very good, David. Thanks for having me on this morning. Let's talk about Missouri, the Coalition for Missouri's Future. We were talking off the air right before we go, went on about the uh, the list of those organizations that are on this. How broad-based do you see this? Well, I think the coalition is fairly broad-based. It, it's made up of education, health care, business groups, uh, senior citizens groups, uh, a wide array of people and interests who are very concerned about this uh, tax cut bill that's been passed by the legislature and now vetoed by Governor Nixon. You have the AT&T on here, the League of Women Voters, the Missouri AFL-CIO, as you said, a lot of uh, school groups, the elementary school principals, school administrators, school business officials, secondary school principals. You have the uh, Grocers Association, the Council on Public Higher Education, the Hospital Association, uh, Missouri Municipal League, the PTA, and uh, Council of Firefighters and in the MSTA, Missouri State Teachers Association, in addition to the NEA. So you got uh, education covered pretty well on this. Right, and there's a good reason for that because this uh, tax cut bill really has the potential to jeopardize funding for not only K-12 education but higher education for many years to come. How confident is the coalition in its estimate that should this tax cut stand and they override the governor's veto of it, that it would cost upwards of $800 million. Well, if anything, David, I think that's a conservative estimate. And uh, we've, we've seen various estimates on that, but we think $800 million is a very reasonable estimate of the uh, impact on state revenue that this tax cut would have. And that's not an insubstantial amount of money. That is equal to uh, the total amount of money that is spent from state revenue on higher education right now. It's equal to the total amount of state revenue spent on corrections. Uh, so we're eight hundred million is uh, nothing to sneeze at. Now this is House Bill two fifty three, correct? That's correct. All right. So the governor has vetoed this. Was it passed with enough support from the Republican Senate and legis and the House that it would override that veto? Very close. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why we're concerned about it. The uh, the veto did take place. The General Assembly now will come back in September for their annual veto session. Uh, and it takes two-thirds of the Senate and House to uh, override a veto. The actual vote on the bill uh, was uh, more than that in the Senate, very close on that in the House. Uh, the House leadership, uh, from what they're saying, uh, they are determined to bring this to a vote uh, and uh, an attempt an override. Uh, so uh, that's why we're concerned about it. We think it could be very, very close in September. Oftentimes the most vocal voices that you would hear in state government or outside of state government, sometimes through the media, and we're guilty of this, is tax cut. Always good. Always good. Um, you have to fight that kind of an attitude. Right. Well, that's right. And um, in this, you know, in this case, uh, I think it's important for people to realize that, you know, people, we don't like to pay taxes, but when you look at the broad picture, Missouri's uh, tax burden is um, already among the lowest in the nation. Our business climate here in the state is already very friendly toward business from a tax standpoint. We, uh, there are numerous studies and rankings on that, and typically Missouri will rank somewhere in the 40s as far as overall tax burden. So we already have low taxes. We already have a very positive business climate in this state. Uh, cutting taxes even more, uh, in our view, will do nothing for economic development, for uh, job growth in our state, and will do a lot of harm in terms of funding critical services. But the supporters of the tax cut bill would say that it would bring more business here, that we would be able to compete more. And and a lot of this comes from the the border battle that's occurring between Missouri and Kansas. has nothing to do with sports. But what it has to do is that within the Kansas City metro area, Kansas is making it very attractive for businesses to hop over the state line. And Missouri is saying we have to compete with that. Don't have to worry so much on the east side because Illinois is more Democrat And so they're not going to do what Kansas has done, which has turned to be a really conservative state when it comes to these matters. And so it's that battle that spurs this kind of a bill. That's really where a lot of this has come from, uh, David, is uh, Kansas moved to uh, cut their own income taxes. And then the fear is on the Missouri side, on the western side of the state, like you were saying, that uh, business will businesses will move to the Kansas side because of 
uh, lower taxes. Again, I think that the data that we've seen uh, so far anyway is indicating that's not necessarily the, the case at all. We do see some businesses moving across the state lines, but it's really back and forth. Some, some are moving to Kansas, some are moving back uh, on the other side, back to Missouri. Uh, sometimes that deals with local tax incentives that are in place, but not so much the overall tax burden. And again, when you survey businesses on why they locate where they locate and why they create jobs, uh, the overall tax burden ranks pretty low, really. It's not, it's not nearly the primary reason why businesses locate where they do. Brent Gann is our guest, and again, he's representing Coalition for Missouri's Future. It's a coalition urging the General Assembly not to override Governor Nixon's veto of House Bill 253, which was the tax cut bill. And uh, I've got in my hand right now something that just ran Sunday, and it was an editorial from a person who is a a columnist in the Kansas City Star talking about how the Kansas legislature and Kansas Supreme Court seem to be heading towards a battle because there the Supreme Court may rule that the state legislators in Kansas have not funded education at an appropriate level as they should. And the same thing is happening in this state as far as funding for education. Well, yes. And it would hurt worse. I guess my point is it would hurt worse should this bill um, – override the veto. It, it would. Uh, it would put us in a, in a much more uh, challenging position in terms of funding our schools. And, uh, you know, funding public education is a state responsibility. That's what it says in the state constitution. Uh, and uh, so, you know, if we saw additional revenue uh, reductions uh, that would hurt public schools in our state, could we, could we see litigation in this state over whether or not we are funding our schools adequately. I think that's a distinct possibility down the road that that could happen. Let me ask you for what you're hearing from lobbyists and others who worked in Jefferson City over the past half year. Do you think that a bill like House Bill 253, the tax cut bill, was passed as a statement maker more so than something that those who voted for it, some wholeheartedly support that. Others might be, well, I've made my statement. Now I don't have to vote to override the governor's veto. Some of both, I would think. I think there are definitely uh, uh, there's legislators who, who truly believe in this concept, who are supporters of the tax cut. They truly believe that uh, tax cuts will lead to economic growth, something that we would, would strongly disagree with. Uh, others uh, may be making a, a political statement, you know, in support of a tax cut, uh, for uh, you know, for uh, for political reasons, uh, to to be able to say to their constituents that they supported a tax cut, and uh, you know, is it possible then that they could change their vote on the veto override? Well, we hope so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that that is, that is a possibility. I can't remember whether we've mentioned on the air or not. We did off the air. Donald Hall, who is one of the big business names in the Kansas City area, as you were talking about, those who are are behind the governor's veto and anti. Uh, bill, tax cut bill, Donald Hall is a name that you would recognize if you paid any attention at all to business in Kansas City. Exactly. I mean, the CEO of Hallmark, one of the largest uh, employers in Kansas City, and Mr. Hall has been a very strong uh, opponent of this concept of tax cutting. He's right there in Kansas City. He is seeing the impact of the Kansas tax cuts. He sees firsthand uh, whether there's any validity to this argument that businesses are moving over to Kansas uh, he he also, I think, understands that true economic growth in our state depends on quality schools, both K-12 and higher education. It depends on an educated workforce. That's what's going to lead us to stronger economic growth in, in our state, not tax cuts. So finally, then, what is the work? What's What's going to be the work over the next few weeks leading up to the veto session for the Coalition for Missouri's Future? Well, our coalition is very uh, busy, as you might expect, over this uh, summertime, uh, anticipating the veto session in September. Uh, We're working strongly to get our message out to the public, of course, that uh, we believe this veto uh, should be sustained. Uh, We're uh, also uh, contacting uh, folks in local communities to uh, our school board members and others in local communities to contact their own legislators, since they're the constituents of these legislators, to uh, to uh, communicate to them the true impact on the, those local communities. Uh, you know, legislators uh, pay a lot of attention to uh, what their constituents think, and if uh, I'm not sure a lot of them truly understand the impact on their communities that this tax cut would have when it comes to cutting funding for education. I think our uh, school board members and superintendents are well aware of that, and we're urging them to contact legislators, explain to them what the true impact will be, and hopefully convince some of them to switch their votes 
and sustain the veto. Well, you're talking about uh, voices that need to be heard on on one side as opposed to those who have been heard loudly in the passing and the forming of this bill. It's good to talk to you, Brent. Thank you. Thank you, David. Brent Gann, who is the Chief Communications Officer for Missouri School Boards Association, here this morning as a representative of the Coalition for Missouri's Future. Do you have a website where you can draw people for more information? We do. It's www.missourifuture.net, and you can find more information about House Bill 253 there.